Hi, this is Happy TV reporting from the field in front of Block 837, Aokang Central, where the Workers' Party is holding its first rally for the 2015 general elections. Right now, the field is starting to fill up with more people and sales of Workers' Party flags are brisk. Stay tuned for more updates. Oh, uh, it's a 
This is Happy TV reporting from the field in front of Block 837 at Alkang Central, where the Workers' Party rally is being held. This is the first rally for the this is the first rally for the 2015 general elections. Right now, we can see that the field is starting to fill up with a lot of people, and sales of Workers' Party flags are brisk. Stay tuned for more updates. Hey, <laughs> Appearing now on the stage is the candidate for Alkang SMC, Bang Eng Huat, and some of the candidates from East Coast GRC and Marine Parade. You can see more Workers' Party candidates now coming out on stage. Can hear the crowd chanting Workers Party. Workers Party supporters, fellow Singaporeans, and friends, good evening. My name is Dylan Ng Fu Eng, Workers Party candidate for Marine Parade GRC. Thank you for coming to attend Workers Party rally. I came from a family where my parents had to take on multiple jobs to raise the children. Meals were often porridge and salted egg. They say, 
<laughs> At a young age of seven, I had to take an SBS bus to school myself. I have to take two buses because there's no direct service. Transportation cost was difficult for my family. Every month when I ask my parents for money to buy the bus stand, they have hardly enough money to give it to me. I understand the daily needs and the struggle of average Singaporeans. Till now, I still meet family who are struggling with their concern. They have their pinch and pain meeting our rising cost of living. No one should be marginalized. The PAB tell us our income is rising faster than our consumer price in debt. So they say our living cost should be manageable. You think so? No! <laughs> I will urge the PAP to walk the ground to listen more, not to develop your policy from economic standpoint, but to develop your policy from the people standpoint. Yeah! <laughs> Understand the issues from bottom up not understand the issue top down from your ivory tower. Food prices, transportation costs, rental, housing, everything is expensive. The starting pay for a fresh graduate in year 2000, 15 years ago, averaged $2,300. Now, they are starting pay average $3,000. But if you look at the price of our new flat, it has doubled, it has increased by 200%, but their pay has only went up by 30%. For the younger generation, we are worried because the parents help them to pay their down payment to secure their first home, forgetting that they still have their own retirement to save for. This is troubling. If we continue to give PAP the total dominance in Singapore, we are giving them the mandate to do what they like. When you vote for PAP, you are telling them, do what you like. But when you vote for, vote for WP, you are telling them, you do not have a brand check to do what you like. What is WP proposal to rising cost of living? First, we look at the food prices. The government should take over the control of more hotel centers and not let commercial entity with profit interest to run the hotel center. Hotel store should be should not be select for higher rental resulting in higher price. The tender billing should not be based on rental alone. It should be a factor of a percentage of rental as well. Second, we view our housing costs. A foreign threat incrementally cost a whopping 478,000 in BTO SSI this year. BTO prices should be delinked from the land cost by adjusting the debt to ratio of to 25% of median household income. There should be discount for applicants of two room and three room applicants to adhere to that service ratio of 10 and 20% respectively. Third, transportation. SBS Transit has just announced their quarter two earnings and their net profit increased by 22.8% due to higher ridership and higher fare. We know SBF Transit is a subsidiary of Comfort Delco. Its larger shareholder is Thomasic Holdings. They are most interested in the bottom line to improve shareholder value. Not looking after your interest, our interest, computer's interest. This is a problem when you allow private company to run on public transport. The Workers' Party has also proposed to review the fair adjustment framework. Now, the 
，这个字讲话语言多，我拢讲无变。你讲起，你也是得起。难搞嘛是伫入去，但是传开的地方嘛无，厝价贵，你讲四房式、五房式、四五十万，后生囝做工三四年，工费三千外，我无本事买厝。政府讲，你赚一千块就会使买厝，我伫银行做工十万年，这条蛇我袂晓算啊。新加坡的政府看累，无看认真。新加坡土地真野，但报出来用，包卡丘百姓，那是阿英命。<笑>我看到百姓的痛苦，部长交安无相，部长看无。你讲什么？你讲老人家去捉捉抓皮是运动啊，还是啥子？<笑>真明显呢，政府甲百姓是一个天一个地，完全脱节。后一代长大，我人真正担心。我希望全民全民支持江南党，立法会讲话，立法会替你做代志，立法会出声为人民打拼。为着我的子女，为着我的后一代，老党人讲出去，你的票将把共和党送进国会，打造一个有智能的国会，为民主打响第一炮。展望明天，展望未来，投共和党一票，谢谢大家。Hi, this is, this is Happy TV again. We we'll have a very pretty lady with us next. Her name is Cheryl Denise Lo Siu Wen. The crowd we'll seems to be responding Ng. well to the first speech by Workers' Party candidate Dylan Ng, who spoke in three languages just now: English, Mandarin, and Hokkien. Next up, we have a candidate from. Workers' Party candidate for Nissan GRC. Hello, my fellow Singaporeans. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Oh, my name is Sarah Lo. I'll be contesting in Nissan this year. And I look forward to your support. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to join us this evening. No Thank you. <laughs> Your presence means everything to us. Because without you, there is no Workers' Party. Yeah. An honor to be a part of the Workers' Party. It is a privilege to be here to speak with you and to have an op opportunity to serve you. I am an ordinary Singaporean like you. And I understand the issues you face every day. Because I face them also. I stand here today because I want to contribute to Singapore's progress. And that, you no, know, as we move ahead as a country, we leave no one behind. Like you, I wonder and worry about our future, the future of our nation. Is this a country we can continue to live in? I joined the Workers' Party because I feel I fit in. I feel a shared vision of working together for Singapore, or trying to always make our nation a better version of ourselves. At the Workers' Party, we believe in equal opportunities and agree that elitism cannot rule Singapore. If we only have elitist leaders, leaders who have only had perfect paved lives and careers, how will they be able to relate to the issues of everyday Singaporeans? How are they able to connect to you and to me? These natural aristocrats are going to enact policies that will affect our lives, your lives and mine. 
policies that are detached from the everyday Singaporeans. What we need are capable leaders with diverse backgrounds who genuinely want to serve the people of Singapore and to do so with good heart. And when I talk to residents or with fellow Singaporeans or friends, I hear the worry about the cost of raising children and their education. They worry about the ability to afford housing at the same time, the instability of our public transport system, and yet the cost of owning a car is very, very high. And then there is the rising cost of health care. I remember hearing this phrase many times. In Singapore, it's but it is also very sad. Worst of all, it is true. Is this what Singapore has become? The third richest country in the world, on per capita terms, but everyday Singaporeans who call this nation home are unable to afford living here. Whatever difficulties you are facing, we are facing them daily too. Singaporeans want their issues to be heard and to be represented. Many voters have shared with me that they are not happy with the PAP. They find it tough to live in Singapore. They told me they want to see the Workers' Party to be fighting for them so that their lives are less of a struggle in Singapore. So what stops them from voting more of us into Parliament? It is fear. The fear of being found out of supporting the Workers' Party. They worry that their housing loans might run into issues or any assistance that they're receiving from the government might be taken away. This saddens me deeply. Because in the 21st century, I would have thought in our modern society, a choice is our fundamental human right. Tonight, my fellow Singaporeans, I assure you, your vote is secret. The choice you make is a personal one. I do not ever wish that any Singaporeans who one day vote for the Workers' Party out of fear Vote for the Workers' Party because you are the choice and you believe we can serve Singapore and her people. We will ensure the government is at all times answerable to Singapore. The Workers' Party hears you and you will raise your issues. We won't be your voice in and out of Parliament. We have made our stand very clearly. We are not opposing for the sake of it. We have a purpose and that purpose is to better your lives and to safeguard Singapore's future, the future of our, our children and their children. As for me, growing up, financing my education were problems I faced. Thus, I feel very strongly about education. I believe in lifelong journey and learning. It opens the mind, and not just academically, but also in general aspects of life and decisions as adults. Yes, there are financial assistance and schemes made available for the needy families. But more often than not, those who need help are not aware of these schemes or probably do not know where to get help from. Because daily, they are most likely trying to make ends meet in Singapore and take each day at a time. How do we reach out to these Singaporeans who have fallen through the cracks? The desire to ensure that no young Singaporean has to be deprived of an education simply because of financial difficulties, remains valid in this day and age. This is where help has to come in to help them understand that education is a gateway to end the poverty cycle. We should start from the schools itself. In the Workers' Party Manifesto 2015, we see social inequality as a challenge to be tackled and not as an inevitable outcome of globalization. We are proposing for equitable, equitable funding for schools so as to mind the school quality gap. There is a gap in disposable funds between elite and neighborhood schools. This is because elite schools usually charge higher fees, enjoy greater economies of scale, and have a wealthy alumni. As a result, these schools offer more varied sports and enrichment programs, thus producing more well-rounded students. We therefore propose neighborhood, stu uh, neighborhood schools receive additional government funds in order to ensure all schools are adequately funded to become good schools as well. And apart from education itself, I also share a soft spot for the elderly. I love my late grandmother very much. My heart breaks when I see a frail old man clearing the many plates in a food court, 
or an old lady bending over collecting cardboards. Why must this be the case? We have a first world economy. Surely we do not need to work our pioneer generations this way. I understand our elders want to be active. No one wants to be kept idle or to be isolated. But surely this backbreaking activities makes more sense for the uh, pioneer generation. They have done their part in contributing and shaping Singapore into what we are today. Surely we can afford to take better care of them. If they insist on being self-sufficient, let's support them by providing jobs which is more manageable for their age and physical ab abilities. That is why we propose a lower CPF payout. And we should in our manifesto also, we improve our retirement adequacy. We propose to lowering the CPF payout to age 60 years old. This will give CPF members the option to start receiving CPF monthly payouts earlier if they need to, instead of having to wait till age 65. The payout eligibility age should be delinked from the retirement age and the re-employment age as well. This will provide members with more assurance of what they are wanting to do with their money, regardless of their employment status. CPF should allow members to choose at the age uh, of the withdrawal so that they can continue to earn interest on their savings and a higher monthly payout at the later withdrawal date. Lastly, I would like to share with you, in July this year, Dr. Ng Yen Hien was interviewed by the Straits Times. You know what he said? He said the general elections in 2011 was a rough patch for the PAP. He admitted that the relationship between Singaporeans and the PAP was like that of an old married couple where you take each other for granted. Why so? Because they lost the Aljunit group representation constituency for the first time to the Workers' Party. And the national vote share hit a low of 60.1%, down from about 6 percentage points from the 2006 general election. The PAP only took its policies and relationship with Singaporeans after the general election 2011. We do not, the Workers' Party do not claim credit for the changes, but rather the fact that you Singaporeans put the Workers' Party into Parliament was what jolted the PAP into action. <laughs> Bringing them down from their high horses and to come down to the ground to listen to you. This is clear evidence that it is crucial to have a credible opposition party in Parliament so that Singaporeans are heard. Otherwise, what will motivate them to consult and listen to Singaporeans at all? So, my dear fellow Singaporeans, empower your future and vote for the Workers' Party! Thank you, Sarah. Now, the next speaker, we have Mr. Kuo Chun Yong, who will be contesting in Sengang West. 接下来的候选人是许俊荣先生,他将出征圣港西当选区,谢谢。Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. My name is Ko Chung Yong, and I am the Workers' Party candidate for Seng Kang West. On polling night in 2011, I said these words on stage. I stay in Seng Kang, and I will stay in Seng Kang. And in the next five years, I want to make more friends in Seng Kang West. And if Seng Kang West still exists, I will come back, and I want to stand in Seng Kang West again. That was in 2011. And today, I am proud to tell you here, I kept my promise. <laughs> Some people have said, I have disappeared in the last four years. Have I? The fact is, I continue to serve in various capacities in the Workers' Party in the last four years. Immediately after the general elections, I was appointed the legislative assistant to Mr. Chen Shou Mao in Aljunit GRC. 
at the weekly meet the people session, I met with residents, have drafted letters for the MP, and deepened my experience and knowledge of the issues residents face. I learned of all the ways and methods that we can help the residents. It was also there where we saw some of my fellow candidates today start up as volunteers. People like He Kingru, people like Daniel Go, people like Dennis Tan, Dion Pereira, and more. At the grassroots events, I work with the community, community to organize events like the festive celebrations, urine tours, and National Day dinner. In 2014, Mr. Peng Huat asked me to be his legislative assistant in Aokan. The tasks were the same, but the challenges were different. I continued to put in my best efforts in the Meet the People sessions and the grassroots and serve the residents of Aokan. So, no, I did not disappear in the last four years. If anything, I have worked harder since 2011. Thank you. In addition to my work in Aokan and Aokan, I participated in party level house visits two times a week in the areas the WP contested in 2011. Places like Momin Kalang, places like Seng Kang West. But people still ask, during the collaborative issue, why you did not speak up for the people? Well, I received a number of emails and suggestions that I should be speaking out on the matter. My answer is, I respected the choices of the people then. I respected their vote. And so, the elected MP should deal with the issue because the people then elected him to represent them. I was that not, not elected to represent them, so I did not add fuel to the fire when the going gets tough for the elected MP. I did not have any online posturing, and nor did I have any midnight poison letters. <laughs> Unfortunately, the MP decided to take the sides of the authorities. But he said recently, it was a misunderstanding of where he sat. But it is not about where you sit in the dialogue. It's about where you stand in the issue. And clearly, we know where he stood when the issue started. To me, I learned through the role as a legislative assistant that we need to look at things from the point of view of residents, where we draft letters to agencies, where we act as liaisons between the residents and the town council on town matters. We always look at things from the residents' point of view. And that is what I will continue to do. So throughout my house visits, I gather feedback from residents, and there are some issues that I would be bringing up in subsequent rallies. In terms of education, our children are facing increasingly stressful system. So, well, in our manifesto, we call for developing well-rounded citizens in their schools, but not limited by social economic status. The schools should encourage excellence of different kinds and de develop love for lifelong learning. The students should be guided to realize their dreams. We should mind the school quality gap to level up the resources available to schools to allocate teaching resources to provide equal opportunities for all. We believe households have both financial security, that have both financial security and a fulfilling family life are vital to the well-being of Singaporeans and the resilience of the nation. So we want to provide a positive environment encouraging family life for Singaporeans and not disadvantage any family or children. We want to support work-life harmony. Singaporeans should be empowered to work with their employers to achieve work-life harmony without having to worry about the job. We want to encourage vibrant heartland towns. We want to revive the HDB shop houses, revive the hawker centres, revive the convenience stores and the void decks. We should, provide, we should promote the use of renewable energy, development of cycling and walking towns. We should promote local and urban farming and local food marketing to leverage the local economies of the HDB heartland. So voters of Workers' Party, I seek your support to give me the opportunity to serve the people and bring up these issues and more in Parliament. My name is Ko Chung Yong and I'm the Workers' Party candidate for St. Kang West. Vote Workers' Party, empower your future.
This is Happy TV reporting from the field near Block 837 at Hongkong Central. So far, three Workers' Party candidates have spoken. The partner of the Workers' Party! Thank you. Okay, the next speaker that we have for you is Mr. Dennis Tan Bek Fong, who is a candidate for Fengshan SMC. A very good evening to all residents, all voters of Fengshan SMC, and all fellow Singaporeans. My name is Dennis Tan Lip Fong. I'm the Workers' Party candidate for Fengshan. I will first speak in Hokkien and then in Mandarin before I speak in English. ไปเกโฮวาซีตานลีฮองตังหลังต้องเอเฮาสวยนะสิบายไปซ่านเฮบางไปเกเพราะว่าเจเกหุยฮองตังหลังต้องเจเกหุยที่นี่นั้นโซ
就必须要有多元性。最理想的是，国会必须有一个强大的反对党，提供更多不同的思维和建议，同时也能起制衡的作用。而这正是我们当前的国会所需要的。我们现在一对九个一个反对党的议员对九个行动党的议员，你说这是对的吗？我们需要有足够的反对党、在野党、国会议员来扮演这个重要的角色。可惜的是，目前愿意加入反对党阵营出来参选的人，也不是很多。我我自己是一个土生土长的新加坡人，做过国民主义，跟大家都一样。我热爱我自己的国家，我对他的未来感到十分担忧。你们也知道了，物价高涨，医药费啊、呃、昂贵，物房价居高不下。拥挤的公共交通，而且我们经常看到在洗手间、抹地或者是找饭中心、洗碗，甚至卖纸巾的老年人。让我们想想，我们的国家到底在做什么呢？这是对的吗？我小时候都没有看过这种情景。我们的国家是不是越繁荣？这些问题关系到我们国家的未来，也关系到我们子孙后代的未来。我就是想了这些问题，我就决定说我自己也要出一份力量，所以我决定了参加工人党，出我最小部分的力量。我只是一个平凡人。大家出一小，每个人出一小份的力量，积少成多，这就是人民的力量。我希望奋山选民可以给我，给我跟给我给工人党一个机会，在奋山为你们服务。如果当选，我将尽我所能为居民服务。成为你们在国会的那一把声音。我将以我工人党的同事对政府发案和政策问题发表建设性的意见。我将不会为了反对而反对。各位中山的选民，请投工人党一票，掌握民权，把握未来。Dear voters of 中山 SNC。So tonight, I'll give you a brief introduction of myself, so you know who I am. I'm a shipping lawyer running my own little small law firm, which I co-founded 10 years ago. I spent my early years in Jurong and Tolobalanga, and I moved to Marine Parade during my secondary school years, and have been living in the East Coast area in the last uh, since the 1980s. When I was 10, I followed my mother to my first workers' party rally, which took place in the car park near where I live. I heard Mr. JBJ speaking for the first time. Politically, it opened my eyes. Since then, I have attended many workers' party rallies over the years through all the tumultuous times of my beloved party. And also in the process, growing up as a student, I developed an intense interest reading about politics, history, and also I enjoy reading political biographies. Why did I join the Workers' Party? In the years leading up to GE 2011, I was like many Singaporeans, unhappy with the policies, worried about where this country is going, and feeling strongly, and I still do feel strongly, that the government, the ruling party, has lost its way. I felt in 2011, and now, even more, I felt that the PAP, we cannot rely on PAP alone in the next 50 years. It's going to get more complicated. There must be a better contest of ideas. The people, that is yourself, must dictate where this country is going. 
not the government telling you what is good for you. This cannot be a parent and children relationship. You are the shareholders of this country. You are the owners of this country. You tell the government what to do. for greater political com competition. We need more opposition MPs in the parliament. It must be much more than what we have now. One opposition MP to nine government MPs. What's the point? It's still not enough. Of course, a lot of things have been done in the last five years, but it's not enough. I'll give you an example. <coughs> After the PAP suffered a shocking defeat in the Pongo by election, they have the cheek to introduce the population white paper. Now everyone is very unhappy about population white paper. Okay, we don't need to talk about it, right? But after all this debate and with the PAP MPs trying to express some unhappiness uh, of their residents, guess what? All our Workers Party MPs voted against the white paper, and zero PAP MPs voted against the white paper. So what is the point of voting one more opposition, one more PAP member of parliament to our parliament? There's no point. And I would, I, I would emphasize this to my dear voters of Fengshan SMC. But this happens frequently. Most bills are pushed through very quickly. So this is something that we have to change. We have to make the government consider their bills properly, their policies properly. And when there's debate, things need to be changed. It needs, it needs more time, then we cannot rush through the bills. So dear residents of Fengshan SMC, for this reason that I have given a birth, I hope you give me a chance to serve you in Fengshan and to be your voice in Parliament. Let me be your voice to help you to empower your future. Thank you. This is Happy TV reporting from the Workers' Party rally at Aokang. So far, Dennis Tan, has Workers' Party Thank candidate you. for Sunshine SNC, has spoken. Uh, He's the top candidate to speak so, so far. Can you go? The candidate for East Coast GRK. 接下來的演講者是候選人士東海出生東海岸的吳佩松其實是副教授吧。Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. I am Daniel Goh Pei Xiong. I'm an associate professor at NUS, and I'm standing in East Coast GRC. Thank you. It is good to see so many of you here. It is time to empower your future. But there is one thing that stands in our way, and that one thing is fear. Many friends and family members feared for me when I joined the Workers' Party. And again, when I told them I would be standing as a candidate, they warned me, they told me, they will throw the kitchen sink at you. That one is an American expression. The local equivalent is, they will even throw the toilet bowl at you. <laughs> Everything inside. I shared this during my first rally speech at the Congo East by election. My answer to them then and now is life is too short and special to be Kiasu, Kiasi, and Kiasu. Yeah! The problem is, for 50 years, the PAP government has created a huge system that makes all of us face these feelings of fear every day. The Workers' Party seeks to reform this system to remove the fears. Let us start with the feelings of Kiasu. Our children enter the education system playful, curious, and adventurous, and cute. They come out stressed because they are afraid to lose, and they're not so cute anymore. <laughs> One exam after another, getting told what they are, whether they are stupid or smart, Getting super pressure from the parents because they're also afraid to lose. Most students end up beaten down and are lacking in confidence. Those who do not make it to poly or university tend to feel that they have failed in some ways. 
only the brave ones, not beaten down, aspire to be successful in other ways. Those who make it to poly or university feel even more stress to perform. As a professor, I find myself trying to undo the many years of chaosism cultivated by the system, encouraging my, my students to find their own voice and be creative. This is why the Workers' Party is proposing a series of educational reforms. Reform the PSLE so as to use the grades to show actual achievement by the student and not to rank children from smart to not so smart because 12 year olds need to be encouraged not to be sorted like sheep and goats. Yes. <laughs> offer, offer 10 year two trained school programs in every cluster so that some of the parents, those parents who want to, can have the choice to opt out of the PSLE for their children. Implement smaller classes so that class sizes so that teachers can nurture critical thinking and confidence rather than teach over the heads of students. How about being KRC, the fear of dying? In the last 10 years, the PAP opened the floodgates to let massive numbers of foreign manpower into the country. Our population grew from 4 million in 2004, those were the good old days, to 5.5 million in 2014. 1.5 million. Local workers make up 74% of the labor force in 2004 and now only 62%. They say the rising tide lifts all boats, but this is more like flash flooding of the labor force, depressing wage growth and pushing up cost of living. Many Singaporeans have been thrown overboard by the flood and are treading water just to keep alive. Kiasi. Bopin. So our workers lose confidence and become afraid of becoming unemployed. Instead of being proud of their work and spending time and energy to become more productive, our workers try to be safe and not to rock the boat. We worry about our livelihood and our family's daily bread and butter. Our work-life balance suffers because we work even harder. Not productively, but just harder and longer. So that we won't lose our jobs to foreign competition. We sacrifice our family time to save our families. The Workers' Party is proposing a series of reforms for better employment and wage security. We are proposing an employment security fund where employers and employees will each pay 50 cents for $1,000 earned every month, and in the event you are being laid off, you will get up to $9,000 depending on how much you earn up to six months of unemployment. This, thank you. This will help you buy time to retrain, reskill, and reapply for jobs. The Workers' Party is not anti-foreign talent, but we want to protect Singaporeans from unfair competition from those with fake degrees, especially. <laughs> we therefore propose all employment pass and S pass applicants with university degrees and diplomas earned outside Singapore must have their degrees checked by an expert education consultancy yeah, yeah. and submitted to the government. Okay, let me talk about Kiyaku with the last one. Okay? <laughs> You can see how the PAP has been acting like this the whole period, right? the entire period here. It is trying to make us Singaporeans to be kiakui kiakui, right? to be afraid of ghosts and monsters. They have been calling the opposition party names, making us less than human, trying to paint us as monsters, from Mao's to Frankenstein. This is disrespectful politics. Worse, as our chair Sylvia Lin puts it, the PAP itself, Right, it's becoming part of a part, huge party government machinery that it will try to attack and eat you up if, you think, if it thinks you're not on its side. This is why we need a proper opposition party in parliament to check and balance the ruling party to make sure they separate party and government. Thank you, thank you. So that, so that the government will work for the people, work for you, and not become an arrogant monster. <laughs> My fellow Singaporeans, life is too short, too special to be kiasu, kiasi, and kiakwai. This also happens to be the seventh month for many Chinese following traditional customs. I remember when I was young, even my parents who are Catholic would tell me not to be, would tell me to be afraid, all right, to not anyhow touch and say things because seventh month was a month of fear. I learned something important since I started helping with the Workers' Party. I see mutual respect more often now, with neighbours taking care to burn paper money without dis disturbing others, and others not minding some smoke and ashes too much. 
Correct. I follow the workers' party entries on temple dinners, and it's about charity, honouring community spirit and traditions, and I'm encouraging the courage to pursue business success. Seven months is more a month of respect. This is the way to go for our political system. Mutual respect and courage must replace fear. We cannot, because of fear, tolerate the overwhelming power of the PAP machinery to interfere and run our lives. If we want to be successful in the next 50 years, we all need, we will need that what made our founding political leaders great in the first place, which is courage and being unafraid to fail, unafraid to die, unafraid of ghosts and monsters. <laughs> it is this spirit that will bring us forward, not the track record of a few highly educated people. And that was candidate for East Coast GRC, Daniel Go. The crowd at the rally at Aukang is getting bigger and more boisterous. The crowd has warmed up with occasional claps and laughter. We can even hear some air horns in the background. Dear Singaporeans, dear voters of Marine Parade GRC, dear supporters, good evening to all of you. Thank you for coming by the thousands and the tens of thousands to show us your encouragement. Four and a half years ago, I started on a journey with the Workers' Party. Voters of Juchet SMC gave me a very strong support. Even though I was then a very new politician, I'm very grateful today for this support. I was greatly encouraged by your support. It motivated me to work hard. I became a non-constituency member of Parliament. I've raised many, many issues in Parliament in the four years of term in areas such as business, environment, early childhood, finance, and many more. My colleagues and I have raised this issue in Parliament in a manner that the Workers' Party believes very strongly in, which is to be rational, respectable, and responsible. On the ground, I've made many visits back to the SNC, almost on a weekly basis. I've gotten to know many more residents. Now, ESN Go and Minister Tan Chuan Jin has said that the Workers' Party is like a rooster claiming credit <laughs> that the sun rises each morning because it crows. Actually, they are all mistaken. The rooster does not crow to make the sun rise. It crows every morning because it is morning and it's time to wake up. <laughs> The rooster is telling the people, hey, wake up! <laughs> That's what the Workers' Party has been telling the PAP. That's what you, the citizens of Singapore, has been telling the PAP. <laughs> you have been telling the PAP for so long and did not want to listen to you. You have told them that the transport system needed fixing. That letting it be run by private companies as a duopoly was a big mistake. They did not want to listen. You told them that the prices of new flats have gone crazily high beyond what young Singaporeans could afford. You told them that you cannot pack new prices, new flat prices to the resale market, and that there are simply not enough flats to cope with all the people that they are bringing in. But they did not want to listen. Life was too good for them, at least for them. Why change the system? They made their sweet standard of living for some but not for many. In the words of former PAP MP Mr. Inderjit Singh, who has said in February 2013, and I quote, we can safely say, say that we have failed to achieve the goal set by the then Prime Minister Go Chok Tong of a swift standard of living for most Singaporeans. 
except for the higher income Singaporeans, including foreigners who just recently decided to make Singapore their home, unquote. You, the brave voters of Singapore, gave them a big wake-up call in 2011, when for the first time, a GRC, the Algenic GRC, was lost by the PAP. <laughs> hey, wake up! You have ignored us for too long, you told them. Wake up from your sleep and go and get the system fixed. Then they started to listen. In G2011, when it was announced that I had lost the elections for GK at SMC narrowly, I gave a thank you speech on stage. It was a very difficult speech to make. I then reached Charles Chongwell and even asked the residents to support him in his work there as the elected MP. But I said, keep you chit and I will be back. <laughs> Four and a half years later, by the grand wisdom of a small committee of people, Juche SNC is now no more. A wise elder statesman recently said that oppositions are like normals, looking for territories to contest at every election. Well, sir, I am no normal. You did not keep duty at SMC. But hey, never mind. I'm still here. <laughs> In the past four years, besides business within the duty at SMC, sometimes I venture into the areas around the SMC, such as the original duty at Duchet Tukau, to Tai Chi, to Kembangan, to Ubi, to Yunos. And guess what the people are saying to us? Some are confused as to which constituency they now are in. <laughs> some have been in the SMC before, some have been in the Alginate uh, GRC, some are in East Coast GRC, some are in GRCs that no longer exist. So some people describe themselves as normal. <laughs> Shifting constituencies at general elections without ever moving from their own houses. <laughs> so on 24th July, when the new electoral boundaries were out and Juche SNC was removed, I have to admit that I was initially quite lost, at least for the first few hours, about where I should be. Then I remember a valuable le some valuable lessons I learned when I was young. That if somebody pushes you around, you should stand up to the bully. You should take the fight back to them. Otherwise, otherwise the bully will keep doing that to you over and over again. Yeah. And more importantly, I believe that we are first and foremost Singaporeans who love our country. We all want a better future, not just for ourselves, but also for our future generations, regardless of which constituencies we are in. And I know, I know that we can form a very passionate and good team to serve Marine Parade residents. My team and I are here today, ready to serve Marine Parade residents. The EBRC report also made me reflect on why I had joined the Workers' Party in the first place. I had wanted to see a fairer democratic system where rules are clear and contests are fair, and Singaporeans can choose their leaders without fear of repercussions. I wanted to see stronger alternative being developed because I think it's very dangerous to leave it to only one so-called A-team. I strongly believe that Singaporeans are talented. Yes, we are talented. We are more talented than the PAP thinks that we are. That is enough for more than one A team. And we can all benefit from a contest of ideas. I did not have to look far for the passionate team members that I wanted. They were right. 
along with us, right in our midst, serving alongside with many of the volunteers. Now I want to first introduce you to Mr. Terence Tan. Many, many were known that they had fought the cases for AHPTC with NEA and with MND, pro bono, meaning without charging us any fees. He also did pro bono work for capital offences cases and others requiring legal aid. And Harris is not just a lawyer, but he's also an entrepreneur who has started a popular bar and restaurant establishment early in his career. He has teams overseas, including being the managing director of a multinational hotel group with operations from Spain to Southeast Asia. Terence joined Workers' Party after 2011 and has been walking the ground with me for over two years. He's a local boy of Marine Parade GRC, a Peranakan who lives in the traditional part of Juche. He has served faithfully in our grassroots and the Meet People session. Today, Terence is your candidate for Marine Parade GRC. We have heard Ping Ru, just 32 years old, but already a very successful corporate lawyer. She heads up the legal department in a public listed company. She volunteered as a helper in our Meet People session right after 2011, and she came on her own trying to find ways to contribute to Singapore. From there, she expanded her work into many areas of our activity, including helping in the parliamentary research work. You may find it hard to believe that a young, bright, successful lawyer, Gizzi, could find time to keep volunteering week in, week out. But here you have Ms. Herting Ru, your candidate for Marine Parade GRC. And People are actually standing up to cheer for the candidate. Right in the heart of the Malay Highlands of Singapore is your local boy, Mr. Firoz Khan. He was on the party since 2006, but his service was disrupted when he went to UK his family, where he started a successful chocolate factory, and then he came back to Singapore in 2010 and has been serving the Workers' Party since then. Sirius Hart is right in the right place. He took a pay cut from his banking career to be the principal of the Patapis Children's Home where he lets firsthand hand the issues of those who have fallen through the cracks in the Malay Muslim community. <laughs> He's also a handsome guy who grew the Royce chocolate business in Singapore and in the region before starting his own factory in Wales. Mr. Sirius Khan, a handsome person with great commitment. Your candidate for Marine Parade, GRC. Last but not least, Mr. Ng Kueng Dillon. Kueng came from a humble family background, as you have heard from him, studied neighborhood schools, worked his way to his current uh, to university, and he has found success in his banking career, working for both local and foreign banks and he had built up the wealth management business for the bank from scratch. Puing is, is passionate about serving the community and has served as a volunteer in the WP grassroots. Mr. Ng Puing, your candidate for Marine Parade, GRC. The Workers' Party, a team that is not afraid of the difficult task of taking on the PAP in what he considers as one of his strongest wars, because he wants to give you a credible alternative. We know it's going to be difficult and challenging, but we have the strength and we believe in all your support to carry us through. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Team Marine Blue, because 
TV reporting from Locus Party Rally at Alkang. The crowd is getting more excited. More people are standing up to cheer for the candidates. Next up is Gerald Giam. He's an NCMP. Residents of Alkang and from all corners of Singapore, especially East Coast GRC. Good <laughs> evening. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be back here to speak to you. Now, during my house visits to East Coast GRC, a few residents have asked me what the opposition can do for them in Parliament. Some think we have only a few elected MPs. We can't get laws changed or prevent bad laws from being passed. We can only make speeches and hope for the best. I believe that our value as an opposition party is not just about taking up more seats in Parliament, making speeches. It's much more than that. First of all, if you elect a sizable number of opposition candidates into Parliament, it will send a signal to the PAP that all is not right with that policy and their attitude towards the people. On the other hand, if you give the PAP an overwhelming vote, they will take it that you strongly support their policies on manpower, on immigration, public transport, health care, and they can continue on the same path. Second, once we have a critical mass of capable MPs in Parliament, we would have the resources, time and manpower to scrutinize government policies more closely, propose better alternatives, and put pressure on the government to implement those policies. We need enough MPs to be able to effectively examine the work of over 16 ministries, 66 statutory boards, and many other government organizations. Third, by sending a good batch of Workers' Party candidates into Parliament, you are helping to build a stronger and more credible alternative party that can form a bulwark against an incompetent government that may arise in the future. No governing party lasts forever. History around the world is filled with governing parties which started out well but eventually lost the support of the people. The real political risk in for Singapore is not an opposition that causes gridlock, but not having an alternative to the PAP if it fails the people. So, what are the policy changes we are pushing for in this election? I would like to invite you to read our manifesto entitled Empower Your Future. It is available for sale here at the rally, or you can download it from our website. It is 46 pages long and contains over 130 proposals for improving the lives of Singaporeans. Today, I will talk about one major economic proposal in our manifesto. The introduction of the national minimum wage. What is a national minimum wage? A minimum wage is the lowest salary that employers are legally allowed to pay their workers. A national minimum wage will apply the same wage law across the country instead of having it only apply to certain industries. The minimum wage is not a new concept. The first minimum wage law was introduced in New Zealand in 1894. And now most countries in the developed world have minimum wages or some way of ensuring a wage law. Why do we want to introduce a minimum wage in Singapore? There are many reasons and I'll outline just a few today. First, 
We want to reduce poverty in our country. This is a basic responsibility of any government. There are now about 110,000 full-time employed Singapore residents who earn less than $1,000 a month. This is based on 2011 figures provided to me after I asked the Manpower Minister a parliamentary question. Ask yourself, can you support a family in Singapore with less than $1,000 a month? Well, let's look at the statistics. According to the government's household, household expenditure survey, the average monthly household expenditure for the poorest 20% of households is $2,230. This means that even if both parents in the household are working but earning less than $1,000, it is still not enough to cover their expenses. According to another government statistic, which I'll print in Parliament, a family of four on average spends $1,250 a month just to pay for basic needs. I think most of us will agree that in the world's most expensive city, which is what Singapore is according to the Economist Intelligence Unit, it is unreasonable to expect a household to live on less than $1,000 a month. The second reason we are calling for a minimum wage is to encourage more people to join the workforce. There are currently many women and older persons who choose not to work because the wages they would earn are not able to cover costs like transport and childcare. So it is more worthwhile to stay at home and look after their children. This is an untapped labour pool for our economy particularly at a time when we are faced with a labour crunch. If we can encourage more people to re-enter the workforce, it could help improve economic growth and at the same time reduce our dependence on foreign labour. Third, we cannot afford to wait much longer for productivity to rise before raising the incomes of our lowest paid workers. The PAP government set a target of achieving 2 to 3 percent productivity growth per year up to 2030. But what are the results? In the last four years since the last election, productivity growth has been close to zero or negative. In fact, a minimum wage could put employers to raise productivity of low-skilled jobs. It could incentivize them to provide better training for our low-skilled workers and introduce automation to help raise workers' productivity and match the higher wage levels. To match the higher wage levels. There are other reasons for introducing a national minimum wage, and there are many exceptions that are usually granted to reduce their negative impact on businesses. I do not have the time to elaborate on them in my speech, but the Workers' Party welcomes a national debate on this issue. We will be happy to address this issue in more detail during the course of this election campaign. A national minimum wage is just one of many proposals that we are pushing for in Parliament, if you elect us as your representatives. Our goal is not to oppose for the sake of, every, for, for the sake of opposing. We will not oppose everything the government is doing, but we will work with the government to identify better solutions and put pressure on them to implement those solutions for the benefit of Singaporeans. Fellow Singaporeans, we stand at a critical moment in our history as a young nation. We are no longer a developing country that is struggling for survival. We have achieved a high level of economic development due to the hard work of our pioneer generation and many others that have followed, and our commitment to work together despite our differences. Yet there are segments of our population that have not reaped the full benefit of our economic growth. We need to do more to uplift the lives of these fellow citizens so as to create a more equitable society and dynamic economy. The Workers' Party has and always will stand on the side of Singaporean workers and their families. Please support us in this election so that we can continue to push for more compassionate and sound economic and social policies.
Vote for the Workers' Party. Vote to empower your future. Thank you. Thank you, General. Next, we have Mr. Muhammad Faisal, who is also the candidate for Arjuna JRC. Hello everyone. Is there any Aljunied residents here? <laughs> Aljunied residents? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good evening everyone. Tata. Oin Sang Hao. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Tonight, in my speech, I would like to share about myself and the retrospection of my political journey. I'm sharing this two matters with you because in Malay, there's a proverb that goes, Tak kenal, maka tak cinta. In translation, if you do not know me, you won't be able to love me. No! Nice, nice. <laughs> but in this context, it's not to love me per se, as a person, but instead, to love this cause of mine of bringing good to our nation. Yeah. My name is Muhammad Faisal, or in Chinese, they call me Muhammad Feta. <laughs> it was given to me by my parents, and was taken after the name of the King of Saudi Arabia, which rules between 1964 to 1975. One of the many meanings of the word Faisal in Arabic is an arbitrator. My life principles are to be a mercy of blessings to the universe, which means to bring as much benefit as I can to the society and our environment. Secondly, to do things right, even though it may not be a correct thing to do. i give you an example. Many people whom I met prior to me joining WP advised me that I'm doing, I'm not doing the correct thing. But my response was, it may not be a correct thing to do, but it is absolutely the right thing to do. I'm thankful, heartened, and greatly appreciate to have been given the chance and the trust by our unique GRC residents to serve them as a member of parliament together with my other parliamentary colleagues. The last four years, or the last four and a half years, has been a humbling experience which I really treasure most. My political journey started at the end of 2005 when I was about to end my university studies in Melbourne, Australia and about to return to Singapore. I was surfing the net and came across a video featuring our late and highly respected J.B. Jaya Ratnam. In the video, the late J.B. Jaya Ratnam was interviewed and was asked why he was so persistent in his political struggle, although he has faced bankruptcy twice. His reply triggered me to take part in politics. His simple but most impactful answer was, he is a God believer and he believes in social justice. Yeah. Immediately, the voice from my heart responded, I'm a God believer too and I should do the same thing that is to be the part of this struggle for social justice. I returned to Singapore in 2006 and the very first thing I did was to join the Workers' Party. <laughs> Why Workers' Party? I chose to join the Workers' Party because I could relate well with the party's call to move towards a caring society. And also, 
on the party's philosophy, which says to take into consideration the humanistic aspect of factors in the formulation of government policies. I was appointed as election agent for a unit GRC team in GE2006 and in GE2011 stood as a candidate and was elected in parliament and now standing in front of you, all of you, as a listening, listening candidate, ready, committed and determined to defend Argument GRC! as a councillor in one of the voluntary welfare organisations. I see my role as a councillor is to assist and empower individual so that he or she is able to develop his or her determination and motivation in resolving his or her personal issues. Doing both counselling and politics at the same time, I started to realise after a while that these two areas, counselling, politics and politics, complement each other. For example, if a person faces life difficulties, counselling can make this individual feel empowered in resolving their personal issues. However, if these same individuals live under a constant stressful living conditions which are caused by the government policies such as overcrowding and loss of jobs due to influx of foreigners, financial burdens due to high cost of living and low as well as stagnated wages, no matter how much counselling will not be able to make these individuals to feel empowered, as these external factors such as government policies will not only curtail but also suppress the process of self-empowerment. My almost 10 years in politics are full of both challenging and joyful moments. When I first joined WP, I received many unwelcome remarks and comments such as it is a lost cause to get involved in opposition politics, waste of time, and many more. But this negative remark did not deter me. I faced one of the biggest hurdles in my political journey back in 2010 when I was told to leave my counseling job due to my political activism. I was at the crossroad because counseling is my passion apart from my livelihood. At that point in time, my two children were still very young age 8, 4, and one, one half year old, respectively. Nonetheless, I took the plunge, holding tightly to my principle, that is to do the right thing and leave the rest to faith. Yeah. Ten months later, I stood for GE 2011 and got winning. I was elected as one of the MPs for a unit GRC. The past four, four and a half years, me and the rest of WP's elected MPs and NCMP's colleagues went through many thick and thin together, both in and out of parliament. We endeavoured these challenges with patience, determination, and as rationally as possible. These pains and agonies we face are worth it. Personally to me, it is necessary to go through such circumstances so as to achieve changes and betterment for our society. The, research, the, the support of our families, staff of HPETC, residents, volunteers, supporters and many others, we have managed to face and run through these challenges with positivity. And indeed, these challenges have made us stronger and more determined and resilient. And the reason why I'm telling you all this tonight is to share that being the Workers' Party members of Parliament is very challenging, but yet humbling and fulfilling. The pain that we run through diminishes when we see smiling faces of our residents, supporters, volunteers, and fellow Singaporeans. To me personally, the pain that we have gone through is very much worth, worth it as this pain, I repeat, this pain translates into society's gain. Our pain is your gain. And I believe that all my 27 party colleagues on this stage are now 
most willing to absorb the pains for the sake of our society gains. Tonight, during the first rally for GE 2015 campaign, I would like to make a very important call, a crucial call to you, my fellow Singaporeans. The call to bring good to our nation, the call to make the change, the call to empower the future. Come September 11, vote for the Workers' Party! Thank you, Faisal. I have a small announcement to make. For people who cannot hear very clearly, please move to the center of the field. Hi, this is Happy TV at the Workers' Party Rally at Algon Central. The few hosting the rally is now almost full. As you can see, there are some people who are standing at the edge of the field. <laughs> Okay, next. People are being urged to move to the center of the field now. Next, we have a speaker. She is Miss Lee Lee Lian. Can you get a phone go in? Next up, we have the next speaker. Miss Lee Lian, please. Thank you. for Congo East SMT. Thank you for coming tonight. I'm very heartened to see so many of you here today on the first night of our rally. How time flies. I remember standing here in 2011. There have been many, many firsts in the last four years for me. In 2011, I contested an election for the first time under the Workers' Party. In 2013, I contested in my first by-election and I became an MP for the first time. Thank you. Thank you to the voters of Congo East for giving me the mandate to represent them in Parliament. Thank you. I made my maiden speech in Parliament, voted on bills, debated the budget, all for the first time. I also had my first child. <laughs> and now, I am standing for elections for the third time in four years. Wow! It has been quite an experience, but I'm very glad to be back here again. Along my journey, when meeting residents, I have come across many, many important issues that they have in common. The cost of healthcare, the cost of housing, the need for more elderly and childcare support are some of them. And I've raised many of these issues in Parliament. At the same time, on occasions I've met individuals with challenges that fewer people understand and can relate to. People such as caregivers and Singaporeans with foreign spouses. These are groups of Singaporeans that I've kept close to my heart. They often struggle in silence. They are often judged and have few people to turn to. People like them are often overlooked by the policies we have in place today. Yes, Singapore has achieved much over the last 50 years. We are lucky and privileged to live in the country we do today. But with this good life, one thing is missing. Empathy. Empathy for the underprivileged, the ones who fall through the cracks. Empathy when policies are being made because the government is overly focused on numbers and end results. Our current leaders lack empathy. Over the years, we met a number of residents, often male and earning lower incomes. Their wives are foreigners and they are unable to qualify for long-term visit passes. They are often issued short-term passes instead which require them to come in and out of the country. Situations for these families are often very sad. Many of these foreign spouses are female and they have Singaporean children. 
there is no guarantee that the foreign spouse will be granted an extension of their visa. Imagine the stress on these families and the anxieties of young children who have to shuffle in and out of the country or face constant separation from their mothers who are on short-term paths. These families are unable to plan a stable life together long-term, given the constant disruption and unknown outcomes. I remember speaking to a resident in Pongo East who lamented that he is not able to get his wife a long-term visit pass. He asked me, is the government forcing me to leave the country with my wife and children just because I am not highly educated? He also asked, should I stay and deprive my children of their mother? Marriage is a choice that everyone has the right to make. I have raised in Parliament before that the criteria for application should be made clearer, but we have yet to see any progress. We need to be able to distinguish people who want to make a home here from those who just want to use Singapore as a transit point. We must, most importantly, protect our families. Another group of Singaporeans that are often forgotten are our caregivers. Caregivers include stay-at-home parents, grandparents, who are primary caretakers of our grandchildren, as well as individuals caring for dependent parents or relatives. Being a caregiver is a full-time job. There are physical and emotional challenges as well as financial ones. Many caregivers are unable to work due to their responsibilities. Almost half of around 200,000 of them in Singapore are unemployed today. The government today offers tax relief in the form of parent relief, handicap dependent relief, and grandparents caregiver relief. But these reliefs are regressive in nature. People with lower incomes benefit less from tax relief. This does not make sense as the lower income caregivers are most in need of financial support. And with many of them not working, tax relief is no relief to them at all. I have spoken in Parliament again about providing more financial assistance, subsidies or CPF contributions to this group. And I will continue to speak for them if I can have the mandate to be elected back in Parliament again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as a society, we have the responsibility to look out for the vulnerable among us. And it is the responsibility of the government to make decisions with empathy so that the vulnerable are protected, especially when families are involved. Fellow Singaporeans, I am standing here today because I believe in representing you. I believe in a compassionate society and in empowering your future by speaking up for you in Parliament. I believe in speaking up for fellow Singaporeans who today may not feel empowered to stand up and ask for support. I believe in a better Singapore that looks out for all Singaporeans. This can only be achieved if there are more voices in Parliament. <laughs> voters of Aljunit GRC, Altam SNC and Congolese SNC, you empowered your vote in 2011, 2012 and 2013 respectively by voting Workers Party MPs into Parliament. I am sure you have noticed changes that have been made by the PAP. Is this because they have become more empathetic over the years to your concerns and needs? Or have they woken up because of the power of your vote? Do we want a more empathetic Singapore? Do you want more leaders who will empathize with you and speak up for you when things are not going right? Yeah. If the answer is yes, then empower your future, our future, and the future of Singapore. On 11th of September, help us turn the attendance tonight into vote for the Workers' Party. Vote Workers' Party and Miss
Lee Lillian, who is defending a seat Special at Punggol East. Next, we have the candidate from Aljuni GRC, Mr. Pritam Singh. at today's rally and for your continued belief in a more inclusive Singapore defined by checks and balances. NHPETC has turned a corner. The Workers' Party MPs squarely addressed the issues identified by the AGO in Parliament taking responsibility for them and having no compulsion about supporting a motion that criticised us. My fellow Singaporeans, it is worthwhile repeating a fact you don't hear very often from the PAP, and that is, all town councils in Singapore run operating deficits, if not for grants, received from MND. Our latest accounts were audited by an auditor whose appointment was approved by MND. And the latest accounts show that HPTC had it received the grants that the government owes it, the town council would have recorded a surplus of $1.6 million. This is in addition to a small accumulated surplus, cancelling out all the deficits from the previous years. It has been quite an achievement, even if there remains more to do. In spite of a 10-month audit by the AGO, which did not expose anything criminal on part of the town council, the PAP have worked overtime <laughs> to ensure that a Singapore of political checks and balances does not occur or make progress. Mr. Go Chok Tong himself famously said, exists in a political system where I thought they are their own check. Is this the future we want for Singapore or our children in the next 50 years? Own self, check own self. I think it is important for all Singaporeans to reflect on what actually happens on the ground in Aljune, Aukang and Pongolese. Earlier this year, in April, after the AGO debate in Parliament, the Minister of Social and Family Development made a ministerial visit to Al Jure GRC. This is what he said, and I quote, There are of course usual local issues. Some are municipal issues, which I guess is something the town council needs to settle, but, nothing peculiar. I get that in my own world as well. <laughs> my fellow Singaporeans, the Workers' Party will be the first to admit that running the town council has not been without its challenges. Some residents have suggested that the HDB should take back the running of town councils because the provision of amenities and services to residents should not be politicized. There is merit to this view, a point that came across during the AIM saga, where 41 out of 50 Singaporeans polled said that looking after town councils should not be politicized and they should instead be returned to the HDB. Do you remember AIM? 
like the adverse financial report that the People's Association of PA received from their accountants in 2007, and which the PA gave themselves six years to clean up, the PAP does not like to talk a lot about AIM. <laughs> but let's think about it. Because AIM is a beautiful metaphor for the politics that takes place in Singapore, in our town councils. Residents first pay for a computer system, which is then sold to a PAP-owned company. But when the town council changes hands, because residents have voted another party in, the PAP-owned company withdraws the computer system from the town council. <laughs> the new town council would then have to go out and purchase a new system, effectively causing residents to pay twice for the same service. And the PAP then asks, how come the new opposition town council financial situation has deteriorated? How was the aim structure ever in the interest of Singapore and Singaporeans? The PAP say they have investigated and debated in parliament. But is that enough? The aim episode showed Singaporeans that the town council framework as it exists can be structured to damage our political process and our democracy. The Town Councils Act came into operation in 1988. Those of you who remember will recall the 1980s as a time when the opposition started to grow firmer roots in Singapore and when the Workers' Party nearly broke through UNOS GRC, narrowly losing with about 49% of the vote. It is my opinion, my friends, that the purpose of designing the town council system was for it to be turned into a political tool that could arrest any wave of support for the opposition. Today, it is being used again in a big way to arrest the support for a more plural and democratic Singapore. Make no mistake about it, the town council structure is not as innocent as it looks. Could it also have been structured with a dual purpose to teach Singaporeans a lesson and to punish them for exercising their democratic right when they vote opposition? Maybe that is why the PAP chairman has not been able to amend the Town Council Act in Parliament two years after he announced he will do so because the current structure is so advantageous to the PAP some of you distinctly remember how no managing agent wanted to tender when the Workers' Party took over al in 2011. Please ask yourself why? Because this is a very fundamental question we often overlook when we discuss Town Council matters. Now, the Town Council managing agent business in Singapore is a very small one. The biggest player is EM Services, a private company which is ironically 75% owned by the government and specifically HDB. <laughs> EM Services manages 9 out of 15 town councils in Singapore. The landlord of the town council common properties in Singapore is the HDB. Think about that for a minute. Nine out of 15 town councils are managed by a HDB-owned company. The odds are already stacked against opposition town councils. Should a company 75% owned by the HDB decide not to tender for managing agent contracts in, in opposition town councils? How has this happened? 50 years of PAP dominance has led to this state of affairs and we need to reverse it. And we need to prevent the PAP from entrenching a political system that skews politics in any one party's favor, not just the PAP. The only reason the PAP have been able to create such a political system is because of their parliamentary supermajority. My fellow Singaporeans, 
We simply have to cut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the matter of why it is so important to empower our future in the context of a one-party dominant political system, because that is what is so fundamental to many Singaporeans. Even though 40% of Singaporeans have made their desire known for a more balanced political system in the last elections, the PAP continues to retain more than 90% of the seats or close to 90% of the seats. My fellow Singaporeans, the town council structure, like the town council structure, the current political system is structurally flawed. And it will not bring us the inclusive Singapore that we Singaporeans genuinely want. An inclusive Singapore will only take form when the values enshrined in our beautiful flag, especially those of justice, Equality and democracy are genuinely institutionalized in our political system. You made a momentous breakthrough in 2011. Let it not be a false dawn. While we saw the government finally responding to the people's voice, there are many more miles to go. There is a lot more to do to improve our national institutions and structures as we have outlined in our manifesto. To all voters and fellow Singaporeans, we cannot afford to slide back to a one-party dominant state and parliament. Empower your future! Vote! For the Marcus Party! Thank you! This is Happy TV reporting at uh, Aukang, Marcus Party Rally. Thank you, Britain. The rally is now entering its final hour. And there are more candidates from Aljunit coming to speak. Next up is Chen Xiao Mao. Chen Xiao Mao, Chen Residents of Aljunit and fellow Singaporeans, Selamat datang. Terima kasih atas kehadiran anda. Please allow me to begin in Chinese. Baja ha. Ah. 后来呢他说新加坡的反对党他本来就准备出来了
今天还没来以前呢，我看了一下啊，四年前啊、呃、跟大家讲话那个录像，发现呢我讲话非常非常慢呢，速度很慢。<笑>这个我个人习惯，可是听众呢可能啊、呃，可能比较比较难接受，所以等一下，等一下，如果我讲话慢下来，请大家让我知道。好不好？热烈的鼓掌！<笑>特才，让我知道我讲话太慢了，应该讲话快一点，好吧？<笑>我有一个小女儿，我有一个小女儿，今年要考小六会考，所以全家人呢都跟着她很紧张。我跟她说：“女儿啊。”你有没有听过这么一个预言？蜈蚣说：“啊、哦，这个是蜈蚣公哈。蜈、啊、蚣，蜈蚣说，有这么一只好练的公鸡。这个预言不是蜈蚣自己想的，这个预言是来自啊希腊的伊索。”啊，一位也呃，也是一位公公啊，啊，啊，你知道希腊在哪里吗？他在西方，啊，可是呢，中国，你知道中国在哪里吗？中国他在东方，中国也有一则预言，啊，我来讲给你听。<笑>中国有一则预言啊，中国说，那这个预这这个呢，是是记录在哈呃中国这个《山海经》啊，还有其他一些书里面的，很有名的。中秋节就要到了，你也听过了。啊！天上，天上，天上有一个天地，天地它有十个孩子，这十个孩子呢都是太阳。每一天，他们其中一个人，啊，在听到有一棵大树，叫做扶桑树。这个大树上面有一只玉做的公鸡，那一天值班的这个呃太阳，如果听到了这只公鸡在叫，它就会起来啊，然后从呃从东边起来，呃西边下来啊，它做它的工作。本来这些太阳规规矩矩的。会好好的做他们的工作。后来呢，发现没有人能管得了他们，我就一起出来了。有时候，你想一个太阳有多热？尤其我们在新加坡，十个太阳来，那还怎么办？热死了，受不了，民不聊生，人民喘不过气来。还好，还好，这个时候有一个后羿，他呢一直在锻炼身体，一直在练武功，啊，他有一张弓，还有十支箭，还好这个时候他能够代表人民，帮助人民拿剑。太阳不是从东边升来吗？他拿剑从东边，<笑>一个太阳，一个太阳，一个太阳，射下来。他有十支箭吗？射了下了九个太阳以后，剩下那支箭怎么办？<笑>
不能把最后的太阳脸射下来。他看到那只公鸡，看到那只公鸡，他听到蜈蚣的话，他就。成了什么攻击？啊？这是什么攻击？谁知道？新加坡谁知道？我们我们的副总理张志贤先生他知道。<笑>他说，他说这是一只沉默的攻击。<笑>这是一只沉默的攻击。同一只公鸡，朋友们，吴总理说是号链的公鸡，张总理，啊，副总理，说是沉默的公鸡，所以你知道什么？在新加坡，公鸡不好当啊，啊，公鸡不好当。我跟大家分享，四年前呢、啊，或者那个不太久以后，在我们后港补选的时候，我在这里跟大家讲的一句话，一段话。我那个时候说，各位居民，请想一想。这一次补选，那个时候是补选，这次是大选。这次大选，透过你的一票，要告诉政府什么？你要告诉政府，说朝上次大选以后的大方向继续转变，采取更多的措施来关心和处理我们大家居住。交通、医疗、就业、生活费各方面的议题，我们是不是这样告诉他？还是我们说够了，做的差不多了，可以收工了？所以希望投票的时候，大家慎重考虑，要掌握我们的民权。把握未来，谢谢，谢谢大家。Friends, friends, I believe in diversity. Diversity, and I believe that in order to have diversity in government. Tomorrow, we all need to take action today. We all have our roles to play. Mine are in Parliament. I in my ward, Paya Leba, and in helping to build. A responsible party. These are my roles, and I have done my best on all these fronts, driven by a sense of duty. My hope, my hope, is for all of us. <laughs> to feel empowered with the power that we can bring to one another. We call it the power of we. My wish is for us to all feel empowered. To move away from a monolithic Singapore towards a better future, empower your future, my friends.
you, Mr. Chan. Next, we have the candidate for Aukang SMC, Mr. Kung You can hear the crowd shouting, Fat Ah! Basically, like a nickname for Peng Eng Huat, candidate from Aukang. <笑>这头头说的代志你能听得懂不 so, <笑><笑> 一半路是三年 CPS是你的類<笑> 所以你參參了嗎?你這是你,你這是你啦,你也有。所以那金黃你跑跑跑,你會得笑。我不啦。CPS是我來。所以,我得笑當來,我是MP是不?你說到底看到的公職金沒多一金黃你。金黃你,你
I believe the next generation will not run loose. My greatest fear is, if the PAP is given a mandate and left unchecked, it will be the one that will run loose. Given its absolute power in Parliament, we are seeing PAP behaving badly ever so often now. Singapore cannot afford to have an unchecked PAP and I will tell you why. On 21st November 2014, a PAP minister issued a statement that said, Is the SNCC from Aljunic GRC residents being used to cover the deficit in Aukang TC? If so, surely residents of Aljunic GRC are entitled to know. And then he put in bracket for financial year 2010, Aukang TC had an operating deficit of $92,000. Baying for blood, another PAP MP repeated this on 14 August 2015 and said, essentially what happened was this, Aukang Town Council was running a deficit. They took over Aljuni, a town which was in surplus following 2011 general election. They took over Pongo East from Pasiris Pongo Town Council, which was also in surplus. Now the whole Aljuni Aukang Pongo East Town Council is in deficit. We checked the books and found that the PAP conveniently left out the fact that Aukang Town Council had a surplus of $82,000 as of 26 May 2011 when it merged its account with Aljuni GRC. This figure is found in the audit report of the old Aljuni Aukang Town Council for the financial year ending 31st March 2012. This report was presented to Parliament on 22nd January 2013. It is highly mischievous for the PAP to make such a statement to alarm residents of Aljuni, Aukang and Pongo East. This, this is the hallmark of a one-party state where the ruling members can withhold the fact and think that they can get away with murder. I repeat, Aukang Town Council has a surplus when it merged its account with Aljuni on 26 May 2011. 26 May was when we won Aljuni GRC. Residents of Aukang and Aljuni I believe you are entitled to know why the PAP is hiding this fact from you. Today, when I flip open the pages of the newspaper, I couldn't believe my eyes when the headlines on page A7 read, AHPTC was back in the black after agent contract ended. Dot dot KHAW call. That's probably Minister Call. My fellow Singaporeans, the agent contract for AHPTC only ended on 14 July 2015, three and a half months after our financial year had ended. What that means is the agent contract was still running as of 31st March 2015 when we closed our accounts for the financial year. Ms. Sylvia Lim explained that the audit, in the audit report that the turnaround from the annual deficit of the preceding two years to a budgetary surplus was brought about by a combination of factors comprising higher revenue, lower general and administration, uh, administrative expenditure and savings in utilities due to the use of contestable energy. I am shocked the PAP has stood so low to spread careless remarks that AHPETC was back in the black for the last financial year only after its agent contract has ended when in fact there was no such thing. AHPETC has achieved a turnaround in its financial position for its own merit when the agent contract was still running. This is because we do know how to run a town council and we can run it despite being handicapped by the loss of a multi-million dollar town management system developed with SNCC money to a PAP-owned company. 
PAP is trying very hard to paint the Workers' Party as one who will reward its friend with contracts. Let me state this. In no uncertain term, the Workers' Party has never set up any $2 private limited company to do business with town council. And we will, we will never reward our friends with lucrative contracts. We welcome competitive bids from all parties. In fact, the essential maintenance service contract in AHPTC was recently awarded to a company linked to the HDB because it gave the town a competitive bid versus the other tender. I guess fixing the opposition is more important to the PAP than fixing the MRT, <laughs> the hospital bed shortage, and improving the Singaporean call in our workforce. My fellow Singaporean, the time has come to reject BAP's power politics. The time has come to reject politics of intimidation, politics of divide, and politics of mudslinging. The time has come to empower your future. The future is something we, the citizen, must protect at all costs. Because if we allow the PAP to control every aspect of our lives again, we will all go back to the dark ages of politics, when citizens had no voice in the parliament, no say in the policy, and no recourse if government decides to increase the population to 6.9 million people. The Workers' Party voted against the population white paper, but nothing Nothing is going to change because the result was 77 votes for and 13 against. The PAP will take this as a clear endorsement of their population policy roadmap from you, the people, because all the elected PAP MPs present at the sitting supported the roadmap to increase the population to 6.9 million people. Let me tell you something interesting about the population white paper. When it was first tabled in Parliament, on 4 February 2013, the Deputy Prime Minister Teo Chi Hiang asked the House to endorse the Population White Paper as the population policy roadmap to address Singapore's demographic challenge. Population policy roadmap. The very next day, the PAP immediately tabled an amendment to drop the word population policy. After many Singaporeans expressed their shock and rejection of the population policy, the PAP also tried to sugarcoat the statement further by adding that it supports maintaining a strong Singaporean core by encouraging more Singaporeans to get married and have children. Supplement by a calibrated pace of immigration to prevent the citizen population from shrinking. And the last one is the best. And recognizes that the population projection beyond 2020 are for the purpose of land use and infrastructure planning and not a population target. Do you believe the PAP? No! Do you believe a wild thought through population policy roadmap can be dropped or changed just like that overnight? No! In my three years of being an MP, I've never seen anything like that. That's why it is important for us to empower our future. Empowering your future goes beyond protecting your rights to vote without fear and intimidation. It involves helping to build a strong opposition, to stand up against the tyranny of the PAP, involves ensuring that you, the voters, will never be taken for granted. The Workers' Party will never take voters for granted. When we lose in an election, we will try and try again. When the PAP loses, it doesn't take defeat graciously and gentlemanly. Yeah. On the contrary, it will grab any opportunity to fix the opposition and punish the voters. Yeah. Mr. Lothia Piang knows this very well. And they are doing it again to the residents of Aljuni, Aukang and Pongo East. They are withholding your grant, despite the town council having filled its audit, having filed its audit report on time. 
In the beginning, they say we must have an unqualified account before they release the grant. But did they apply the same standard to their own people? No. The People's Association, that's how you heard Mr. Kutam Singh has said, had six years of adverse report from 2008 to 2013. Adverse is worse, is the worst opinion for audit report. But the grant, the PA, were not withheld and continue to rise every year. Prior to 2008, PA had qualified reports as well. One year after the first adverse report came out in 2008, the government increased the PA, the PA grant to $300 million, a rise of $19 million from the previous year. When the second adverse report came out, the grant went up again. AHPTC had two years of qualified account and the grant were immediately withheld. They say, they say three strikes and you are out. But when PA received the third adverse opinion, the government grant went up by almost $38 million from the previous year. Mr. Lim Sui Se explained that the adverse opinion received by PA was due to the non-inclusion of the accounts of the grassroots organizations or GROs. But it is not that simple. When auditor cannot do any few work on the GRO's account, they basically they were basically saying, and I quote from one of the report, because of the significance of the matter described in the basis of adverse opinion paragraph, the financial statements do not present fairly the state of affairs of the association for the financial year. We are not talking about small sums of money here. The, as of 31st March, the total assets of the GROs amount to almost $300 million and not a single cent of it was checked by external auditors of PA for many years. Mr. Lim said in Parliament that all their GRO accounts have been subjected to internal audit all these years. And that is the reason why he said with confidence that there was no irregularity at the system level. Obviously, the internal audits are not working very well because otherwise, AGO would not have picked up so many things in their latest report on the GROs. I have highlighted in Parliament that AHPTC shared many similar lapses in other, uh, with other ministries and statutory boards, but the treatment and attention AHPTC get is so different. My fellow Singaporean, the future of Singapore is indeed at stake. The future is not about running town council. We can run a town council as proven by our audit report. In fact, there are many, many managing agents who can run town councils as well. The future of Singapore is about getting our politics right. The future is about having leaders we can respect. The future is also about empowering ourselves to do what is right and good for the country. And what we have seen and witnessed from the PAP so far is not good for the country. The time has come to build a nation truly based on justice and equality and nothing less. The Workers' Party cannot do this alone. But together with you, we can change the future. We have done it before in 2011. We have done it again in 2012 and 2013. We will do it again come September 11. Good Workers' Party, empower your future. Thank you. people putting pocket garlands over the Aljunit candidates. Next, the speaker is the candidate for Aljunit GRC, Mr. Mo Chia Chan. The crowd has been 
Reserve is now let's cheer for veteran opposition MP Lao Ta Kiang. The crowd is now in a frenzy, chanting Workers' Party. A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I will first speak in Teochew <laughs> and later in Mandarin. Tahui Hau Kang Azuni Mongo Tangai Swang Ming Tai Ken Tang Nang Kai Ji Chi Jia Mung Jiao Ha Xia Xia Tai Ken 叫做你那个机器，江南党只有听这个政府，只看幺幺二对双子楼，后港阿祖你，帮我当个双面，对江南党的机器，别惊动党，该变政策，只要你该改变改变，对新加坡。這四年來政府都政策上做了好多的改變也改善了新加坡人的生活這是何事不過對江南黨比的比這四年來諸多無理人人所以巴薩人民無錢<笑><笑> 欠集會市政會市政會的消滅的門對老子中啊白人的公司抗爭你也要挖亂行本來咱大雙應該愛辦的是國家的大事人民的最高大家的未來 不過BAPA這個市政理事會的事來挖烏金人蛋所以我聽你不得不解釋我們市政府的消滅是有舒適你政府呢派人來扯笑 這些人他發有什麼問題都要改正了他發出了一個報告這個報告來幫他所指出的問題到目前為止我們大多數已經是解決了不過有什麼事情需要時間當然因為這個消滅的問題是所以當時咱接受這個消滅有關係的其中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中咱接受的重點中
，大家拢坚持关心伊，话，大事伊大条啊，大家飞机个飞弹。不乖，听下子，咱我是仔仔听到这个。大家，你想通，都先听报告，还是咱真的有什么做什么规划的事啊？哎呦喽，那都是白喽。阿是有贪污啊，贪污掉车，怪揸住来车喽，我捞了。你别逼大桥车在，我跟你打大车不会住啊。咱人党是一间负责任嘅政党，咱做二抗幺幺呢，习惯是政府嘅嘅时候所做嘅头一嘅决定，就是因为咱为住管理公司来甲咱管理咱嘅市场，咱嘅决定是管理公司嘅责，呢个支票，还是无咱市场里所谓嘅主席，还是副主席签名，是未使过嘅。袂过变过社会，唔较袂过社会。所以，伊个报纸落台，但我恁管理公司来搬啊，安保毛街诶，卖卖卖出做啥做做诶？家己搞家己煮啊，煮啥打？我有啊，你别逼咱人管理界承包个黑业哦。去拼命做啦，这个是乌白打。咱接手头一年过都市区是无路标，下以后呢，有甲各地发展部部长，过后落来个市政府是会隆重个再去合约，隆重是公开投标个。公开投票是咪？咱拢同来来来来来来票，咱落票来结果，也是爱公开。哎，昨日来去，保留个朋友啊，那边乌车哇，乌白看到掉。你这种啊，哎来乌人市政府是会定来乌啊，应该。政府嘅车销啊，我当时电子书咧，找了十几股诶，真嘛，十几股啊，十几股都到位。所以咱嘅销无变，无变做出来就因为一股咪是因为咱无嘢，无变无嘢时间。你车十几股来销，伊咧哦，我无袂惊啦。<笑>你欧国的家唔敢玩，你这种吼，你欧国的，咱们管理啊，所以你讲管理啊，管理公司的时候，你得趁钱在煮啊。我这个是怪欧曼啊，趁钱在呢，钱在煮，哎，我乱啊，那一支是谈恋爱，我谈恋爱。你比一比，你小大概多多已经系市场里输一个财富嘅管理吼，就得咱江南镇不要管理市场去啦。你搞创业单你莫投江南镇哦，因为你不要市场，你所以讲到都系，诶，小阿妹要做啦，要个诶，算算输机啦吼。我讲你记得着嘞，伊人用革命所交的十倍去投资啊！你别吹那废话，啊！雷曼兄弟过条，兄弟你也输输掉啊！因为这种梦
，你说别比起定力，要去别比管理个，你说，你说能命好。我们没得去搞那个毕业毕托子，你毕业毕叫那阿祖你哭个，个哥没得那托子嘛？叫你做你婆个托子，你不叫一个几个哥没得托子也没有，这个人家没有。叫他把主意住，我我为大，帮上我为大家去呀。我跟他打，我是龙一金固啊！不对，咱就爱一单精神，爱用时间，用心。把这个事要做好，先做好所以，咱欠人理由好，今日大部的。现在，咱个小组出来了，啊，交给各界各边各家各户，咱才是要个先结束，但咱市政府来笑嘛，都了不笑啦，啊，无变改过我三过了啊，其他的。隆重下花，咱二康幺四甲二康幺五年度个项目无亏损，无亏损，还、啊、是顺七。七百二十万个津贴啊！七百二十万个津贴，你这种政府给你扣着，卖亏啊！啊，从这呢听不能发达，你比个啊，呃，能能协会啦，你个小麦啦，我边过年都要四刷来呀！你们来破例，两万块就冇破例啦！这个是要双三等标准。那是包括是七百二十万。那市政理事会，我有七百七十万个建议，那无推送。第二批啊，你出来就来水坑，还坑底下就变名恶啊！我跟你打啦，我你不记得不？第二批个鸟吃山河。你在算是大事还是小事 ？NBA 还准备来跳出来，帮帮啊，莫算啊 ，BAB 来哭啊，哦，两秒时的庄家啊，买了挂在呃挂在挂在老一排啦，马路叫人秒时两两两秒啊。我等你打，如果这样秒时说是个刚刚等来哭啊，我等下死到真快脱。大家参详一下吼，恁大家就要消福啦，消福到头呀，莫陪朋友出柜啦。你也必须会讲完的啦，你今朝出来看透的啦，你也莫会讲完的，免惊免惊。咱江南等，经历过，安尼在大风大雨，咱会大大步走出去。大家啊，我跟你打，比啊比啊。是做在唔做唔正样啦！你做政府五十年，我来教，听下这，教话大概五三五四啦
大神去公告呀，大神大红大包就对了。我问你答哦，为什么在国家？为什么在子孙在国内？九月十一号，恁就大家能争一票。We have the chairman for the Walker Party, Mr. Julian. Financial rules. We can't open tenders for these contracts again in 2014 and 2015. Anyone can submit a bid for a public tender. AHPTC does not and cannot reserve contracts for friends. There was one exceptional situation just after the general election, when a tender was not called for MA services. For a short period of one year, why? First, the former managing agent appointed by the PAP told us that it did not want to continue under WP. There was also very urgent work needed to take over from the PAP management, especially because the town council management software used to run our unit TC was terminated with one month's notice. By a software owner, a PAP company called AIM. <laughs> Under these urgent circumstances, the town council decided to award a very short one-year contract to the newly formed FM Solutions and Services Private Limited, without tender, to take over the initial management of the town council for one year only. This was in order to ensure a smooth takeover of the town management to avoid any disruption in services to our residents. Such a waiver is allowed under the town council financial rules. Once matters stabilised after one year, public tenders were called in 2012. So, did we breach any town council financial rules in awarding contracts to FMSS? No, we did not. Did we act in the residents' interest? Yes, we did. Myth number two: WP's town council overpaid its managing agent. First, please note 
that this allegation of overpayment was not made by the Auditor General's office or by any auditors. It is the mantra of the PAP government and its proxy, the Ministry of National Development. What is overpayment? HPTC called the tender for MA services in 2012. If you look at the managing agent rates at that time, you will see that there were different rates and prices across even the PAP towns. In that year, based on MND data, MA rates for residential units in PAP towns range from the low end of $5 in Tampanese Town Council to a high of $7.80 in Potong Pasir Town Council, a difference of $2.80 per unit. So if PAP says that we overpaid based on an average, then many PAP town councils also overpaid, including Mi Sun Town Council and Sembawang Town Council. When Workers' Party assessed the MA price proposal in 2012, we took into account the price charged by PAP's managing agent for alternate town, which was reasonable because it was managing the same town. We also factored in the cost of some additional requirements, including running an additional office in Taki Bukit Division that we set up for residents' convenience. Our tender exercise was reviewed by three different auditors, our own external consultants, and then by the AGO, and then PricewaterhouseCoopers. Nobody made any finding that we did not exercise due diligence in assessing the tender price. Today, we find another angle that the PAP and MND are playing up, that in their view, FMSs make too much profit. How much profit is too much? We don't know how much the MAs in PAP town councils are making. Is MND saying that all town councils are supposed to check on their contractors' profitability before confirming the contract price? Does MND do that to their own contractors? Myth number three, AHPCC allowed the managing agent to freely sign checks to themselves. This is again rubbish. When WP took over in 2011, one of the first decisions made by the new town council was to require any checks to the MA, no matter how small the amount, to require the council signature of the chairman, myself, or the vice chairman, Peng Eng Huat, or Pritam Singh. I repeat, it is not possible for any payment to be made to FMSS without the check being countersigned by myself, Peng Eng Huat, or Pritam Singh. When we countersign checks, we have to satisfy ourselves that the claims are according to the contract and correctly calculated. There have been times when I've rejected checks, when I find errors or I need further explanation. The town council now has no managing agent, as its MA contract expired nearly two months ago. We are now a directly managed town council with in-house staff and we are managing fine. <laughs> The fourth myth, NHPTC Town Council is in financial difficulties and cannot sustain its operations. Let me first explain what NHPTC had to manage in the first few years before updating you on the current status. NHPTC incurred significant but necessary expenses in the initial years. The takeover required us to incur various start-up costs including the cost of a new IT system to replace the one terminated by AIM. Our lift cost increased tremendously from the time under PAP management, partly because of additional lifts from the LUP program, and also our decision to bring many lifts back to being maintained by the original equipment manufacturer for safety reasons. We also faced higher tender prices for major contracts such as conservancy and cleaning, due to higher costs as well as fewer tenderers coming forward. These tender prices went up by between 13% to as much as 88%. We also spent money on repairs to aging blocks and installed a new lift at the Block 105 Hainanese market for the elderly and disabled with no funding from the government. These and other challenges, I am pleased to update you that the Town Council has managed to turn things around. This came about through lower admin expenditure 
and using contestable energy and increases in revenue. If you look at our latest audited accounts for financial year 2014 to 15, the town council has an operating deficit. But this is because the MND still owes us our annual operating grant of 7.2 million. When the grant is finally received, the town council will show a surplus for the year of 1.7 million dollars. So going forward, we are confident that the financial position of the town council will continue to improve. Are we ready to take on another town council? Yes. I say this for the following reasons. One. We have learned from the experience of taking over our journey at GRC. Two, we have seven MPs with direct TC management experience at GRC level. Three, we are aware of the potential risk areas. Four, we have learned a lot from the Auditor General's audit and made improvements to the areas highlighted. Many of the observations of our former auditors have been cleared, with some remaining that require information from other parties. My friends, have you asked yourself why the PAP and MND is spending so much time on AHPTC? Have you asked yourself this question? Here are some reasons. After WP took over our Junet Town Council, our residents' lives went on as per normal. Even the MND grades are consistently green in cleanliness and leaf breakdowns and ember in maintenance, the same as many other town councils. <laughs> Financial management is the area where we have some difficulties, and so the PAP and MND subject WP to microscopic scrutiny and constant attacks to shake your confidence in WP. AGO audit for 10 months, special parliamentary debate for two days, high court case, even after this election was called last week, I received two more letters from MND questioning me about ASBTC. Did I know this? Did I know that? What is my answer to this? What is my answer to that? I thought the civil service only worked five day week. But I received letters on Saturday and Sunday as well. They are probably listening to our speeches now. They are as good as a 24-7 EMSU unit. Finally, my friends, there's a saying, no pain, no gain. The PAP is trying to make it painful for other political parties to succeed in town council management so that the public will be afraid of voting for other parties. Yeah. Is this the behavior we expect of a first world government? Yeah. Our local party town council has pulled through the last few years despite many challenges and being carpet bombed because we know that these are necessary pains. If we do not do our best to overcome these challenges, there will only be one political party who can manage town councils at GRC level. And this will set Singapore's political development back. Do you want to be stuck with no choice? No! It is up to you. You must play your part to build an alternative to the PAP so that Singaporeans can embrace the future with confidence and without fear. Empower your future. Vote Worker Party. It is 10 o'clock now. We have to close the rally. I'm sorry I will not be able to speak Mandarin, but I think there's other rallies that do come along. Uh, uh,
This is Happy TV reporting at the Workers' Party Rally at Aukang Central. The rally has ended and the crowd is starting to disperse. However, we are staying on for a while to talk to some members of, of the audience. So stay tuned with us. Let's go and talk to some members of the audience. Tomorrow our rally will be at Boon King. So do join us at our rally tomorrow at Boon King. See you at Boon King tomorrow. Actually, uh, my employer has given me a gag order. Oh, okay. Right, so, uh, but, but it's great. Okay. Let's try some more people. Seems that some people are reluctant to talk. Hi, I'm sitting from the media. I just want to get some comments from people on the ground. Are you okay with some comments uh, on the rally? Uh, so really, it's just very okay. quick, quick questions only. Yeah. So is this your first time attending the rally? Yeah, I'm the first time here. Okay, how, how do you feel about the rally? Uh, it's really, uh, how to say, exciting. Mm. <laughs> and really, very, very uh, many people. Mm. Which I, I feel that very grand. And can, can feel the kind of uh, so-called empower mm. spirit. Long. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you a resident of uh, Alginate? Uh, I'm not, but uh, I'm, I'm coming and support. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are some of the issues that they brought up that resonated with you? Uh, part of my, I mean, as a Singaporean, mm -hmm. yeah, this is, uh, I, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> mm. uh, are you most concerned about uh, the, the cost of living or the immigration, for example? Which, which uh, of issue? course, uh, I mean, all, all, all is very really important to Singaporean also. Okay, thank, yeah. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, I was seeing from the media, so we're just getting some reactions on the ground. Just want to get your clue on it. Okay, thank you. Um, hello. Um, hi. So we're seeing from the media, just want to get some reactions on the ground, you know, how you feel about the rent. Um, hello, if you're actually from the media, we're just trying to get some uh, reactions on the ground, how you feel about the rent. Can you give some quick comments? Speak some simple one, also okay. Yeah. Oh, 讲, 讲一点华语不用紧, 讲一点华语不用紧。Uh, 你觉得这个行动大会今天怎么样? 因为是第一次吗? Oh, 
呃，我是住唐东八家的。唐东八家的啊。是来看一下啦。哦。哦，是今天，因为这是我第一次来。第一次来啊、哦，感觉怎么样呢？第一次。很，很兴奋呐、啊。很兴奋啊。啊、哦。他讲的话题跟跟你有关系吗？就是你有。应该是有关系。嗯。哦，关系到我们的未来啊。这个未来。好，谢谢、啊。谢谢你。Hey, hi, actually from the media, we're independent media called Happy TV. So we're doing a, just now we're doing an online live streaming of the, the rally. So just want to get some of your feelings about the rally. A few quick thoughts. We have to decline your on-camera interview. <laughs> oh, okay. Happy <laughs> TV. Hello, I'm actually from the media. Yeah, but I'm just giving some comments on the ground, like how you feel about the rally. Like, actually, from Happy TV. Yeah, we are independent online. Yeah.大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,大家好。大家好,
I'm not keeping away from happy TV than the online media. We did like live streaming. I think it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Hi, you're actually from the, the media. No, don't, don't you just get out of here. Come on. Okay, thank you. Okay. Singaporeans are still quite uh, shy towards the media. We'll try harder for a while. You can see some people are actually taking photographs at the rally grounds. From my conversation to them, some of them probably first timers. They're not residents of Aokang. Live streaming of the, the rally just now. I just want to get some of your comments. How do you feel about the rally? I just came. I didn't stay very long. Oh, you stay very long. Oh, do you hear any of the speeches? I only heard uh, uh, Tekiang in uh, ah, Lao right? Yeah. Okay. In, in Hokkien. In Hokkien. So what? What are some of the things they said? Anything? Any issues that they said that resonated with you? Yeah, I mean town council issue, right? Mm -hmm. It's correct, but okay. Saying that you know our country, you know, if they are corrupt, they would have been in jail by now. Oh, okay. And so, will it, will it be a factor? When it will it be a factor when it comes to voting for them? Well, <clears throat> it should not be, but you, you know, it's been made to be, so mm -hmm. they have to clear it out. Okay. And who I think some of the candidates earlier just to help you a little. I mean, they talk about a rising cost of living and also the immigration and Singapore identity and also elitism. You know how that they, they hope that the Singapore Parliament to be more diverse, include a, a wider segment of society. Any 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 of these issues are important to you? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, it's all, we all know about the issues. Mm -hmm. It's just that we want to hear, uh, you know, what the alternative. No, I think the the, the, <clears throat> the more the, 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 the discussion goes on, I think, you know, I think there's more clarity as far as the issues are concerned. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's, it's good that we have, you know, such an open debate you know, of all the issues that are very close to Singaporeans. Uh, yeah, I think you know we we can have like uh, Paul. Uh, Paul, what, what's his name? Paul. Paul Tambia, is it? Yeah, Paul Tambia. Okay. So you know, it's a contest of ideas and solution. Okay. Then we should have that. Where do you live? Which part of Singapore? You live? I live Bishan. in Bishan Topayo. Oh, Bishan Topayo. Yeah, but you came all the way here. To yeah, yeah. The speeches. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's try one last one. Uh, hello, uh, we are online media. Online, what? online media. Oh, this is online media. 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 很好,你觉得卢森强讲的怎么样了? 很好就对了。Okay, uh, that concludes our coverage. Uh, thank you for staying with us. This is Happy TV signing off. Good night.